This next subject may have some of you shouting at the radio for different reasons, depending on your point of view. There are calls for a cull of Scotland's iconic sea eagles, reintroduced 50 years ago after being driven to extinction. With the success of that reintroduction comes problems. Farmers say they're losing more and more lambs as the eagles search for food. There is a management programme run by Nature Scott, which supports farmers by providing deterrents and helping to map the issue. But but some farmers and crofters say it's not enough. SNP MP Angus McNeil is one of them. Well, in my own crofting township, sort of sea eagles have taken lambs. Most notably, my neighbour one day at lambing time, I went down to find a sea eagle taken off from behind a rock and there was a, a, there was a lamb that he'd just been eating. It was a, really a, a very clean removal of meat from bone of a, a young lamb of about three, four days old. And when I called my neighbour, the crofter, whose lamb it was, he came down, he spotted another one, and he'd noticed those two lambs at the beginning of lambing. He'd noticed those two lambs the night before, and they were running around, three, four-day-old lambs, quite fit and healthy. A local retired doctor and his wife saw a sea eagle take a newly born lamb lifted in the back of the hill that, that we're at around the same time as well, so it was probably the same bird. Have you lost lambs yourself? No, I've been fortunate. I spotted a sea eagle amongst my sheep one day, just sitting there, but managed to create enough noise and racket that the sea eagle went off and didn't come back. And that's one of the things we noticed, that when we mentioned the sea eagle had uh, gone off with the lamb, a lot of people uh, turned up to come and have a look at the sea eagle. And when I say a lot around here, it's maybe not that many in, in London terms or whatever, but it was enough to frighten off the sea eagle. So please, sea eagle spotters are very welcome, uh, particularly at lambing time. Have you tried anything else to put them off? I know helium balloons have been tried by some. Yeah, we've got bird scarers around now. But the problem was most acute with us at so the beginning of lambing when food's short at the end of spring and before birds have started to nest. And from what I'm hearing, that they've been eating puffins like Mars bars in certain parts of the islands and uh, kittiwakes and shearwaters as well. So they've gone on to other things as other food sources came on stream. And that's an important point. You know, these birds are in the environment and people think that they're eating in nature. And there's two activities in the environment. There's nature and agriculture. And the problem is they're not only eating in nature, they're being artificially inflated and sustained by agriculture. What do you want to happen, both to the sea eagles and, and the schemes around them now? So the thing that has to happen is there has to be a cull of problem birds, as simple as that. I mean, if these numbers will keep growing. The pressures will grow amongst the birds themselves as they displace golden eagles and other and, and eagles in, in their own space. And the thing that they will do is they will look for food anywhere. And if the food is available from a crofter or a farmer, they're going to take it. Rather than culling the sea eagle, wouldn't it be more sensible just to compensate the crofter? Crofters are not getting compensation at the moment, so that would certainly be a step forward. And we also have to reach a point where we agree of what is the number of birds that should be on a territory and a number of square miles in, in an island area or in a, in a mainland area or whatever. Because at the moment we're on a, a trajectory with no ceiling at all. And that isn't good for anybody. Angus McNeil. Well, there is a management scheme in place run by Nature Scott. One of their operations officers is Andrew Kent. So it's widely acknowledged that in some places, seagulls can cause serious agricultural damage and, and the impacts on farmers and crofters, sheep flocks in parts of Scotland can be significant. So since 2015, uh, Nature Scott have run a, a national seagull management scheme, and that was revised quite significantly in 2020 in recognition of the ongoing issues and to try and provide some more support to farmers and crofters. So there's a wide range of things that we can support from capital measures such as lamb and sheds and polytunnels contributions towards those to more active measures such as enhanced shepherding, which was developed following some work in Sky by a shepherd there. And that's really trying to better understand what the birds are doing in these more extensive areas, trying to see whether additional human presence in the hill has any influence over the birds' behaviour and recording the impacts that the birds are potentially having in these areas as well. As well as those sort of measures, we can also support farmers and crofters that have made quite significant changes to their, their management system in order to try and address predation impacts. So, for example, people that have moved from a sort of hill lambing system to an indoor or in -by system, we can support some of those, those costs that have been incurred as a result of those changes. But there isn't any direct compensation for lambs lost? No, we, we don't pay compensation. There's a couple of reasons for that. Firstly, a lot of co other countries that run compensation schemes ask for the provision of or carcasses to show that an animal's been predated, and that's very difficult in a Scottish context where a lot of 
lambs that are lost uh, potentially to seagulls just vanish so there's no carcasses or when carcasses are found there's very little left calculating compensation is also difficult as well in, in terms of what does that compensation based on is it the, the lamb that was lost or the potential future breeding value of that lamb and the, and the lambs that might go on to produce if it's a ewe lamb that's lost as we've just heard, some farmers and crofters now want an agreement on how many sea eagles there should be in a given area and then a controlled cull to get the numbers down to what they say will be then a more manageable number. Yeah, I mean, a cull isn't something that is being considered by Nature Scott. We're focused on delivering the, the sea eagle management scheme, but there's also there's wider work going on at a sort of national panel level where there's a number of stakeholders around the table, including Nature Scott, National Farmers Union of Scotland, Scottish Crofting Federation and RSPB Scotland, amongst others, who are all working together to try and address these issues where they occur. Is there an acceptance at any level that there will be a point at which there are too many sea eagles, a point that obviously some crofters think we've reached? The policy on sea eagles is at the moment that the birds have will be allowed to sort of return to their what was their traditional sort of haunts in, in Scotland before they were persecuted to extinction. So returned to their sort of natural range and, and previously the, the, you know, the birds that were present in Scotland would have exceeded the number as at the moment. Andrew Kent.